بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Good morning my dear students We are going to start a new science journey with your teacher Muhammad Ismail Be ready and enjoy your time Our topic today will be about particles theory We will speak about each state of matter solid, liquid and gas and what is the properties of each one depending on, on the movement of particles. Our objectives today will be the first one, what is all matters made of? Second one, what are properties of each type of matter? The theory of particles or kinetic theory of particles we can say all matters uh, is made of extremely tiny particles very very small particles all pure substances are made of their own kind of particles all particles are moving particles at higher temperatures move faster than those at lower temperature particles are attracted to each other that means there is attraction force between each particle in this video we're going to look at the three states of matter solid liquid and gas and see how substances can change from one state to another to do this we're going to use a model called particle theory or sometimes kinetic theory which help us explain how the particles in each state behave by considering each of the particles as a small, solid, inelastic sphere. In solids, there are strong forces of attraction between the particles, which holds them all close together in a fixed position to form a regular lattice structure. And because the particles are fixed, the overall substance keeps a definite shape and volume so can't flow like a liquid. The particles can vibrate around though, so you can imagine them constantly jostling against one another. Now, if we heat up a solid, its particles gain more energy and start to vibrate even more, which weakens the forces between them. And at a certain temperature, which we call the melting point, the particles will have enough energy to break free of their bonds, and so the solid melts into a liquid. In liquids, there are only weak forces of attraction between the particles, so they're free to move around and are arranged pretty randomly. However, the weak forces of attraction do mean that the particles tend to stick together and are fairly compact. This means that they have a definite volume, even though their overall shape can change, allowing them to flow to fit a particular container. If we then heat up our liquid, the particles will again gain more energy, and this will make the particles move around faster, which weakens the forces holding the particles together. Then, once we reach the boiling point, the particles will have enough energy to break the bonds altogether, and so the liquid boils or evaporates into a gas. In gases, the force of attraction between the different particles is very weak so they're basically free to move around by themselves. This means that gases don't keep a definite shape or volume, and instead will always fill a container as they spread out as much as possible. Now, we normally say that gases are constantly moving with random motion, which is a bit confusing because gas particles actually move in straight lines. They don't randomly swerve. What we really mean by random motion is that the particles can travel in any direction and they'll end up being deflected by solid walls and other gas particles randomly. When we heat up a gas and the particles get more energy and so travel faster, the gas will either expand if the container it's in is expandable, like a balloon, or if the container is fixed, then the pressure will just increase. On the other hand, if we cool the gas down enough, then the particles won't have enough energy to overcome those forces of attraction between them. And so bonds will start to form between the particles, 
condensing the gas into a liquid. As we cool down the liquid even further, the same thing happens. The particles won't have enough energy to overcome the attraction between the molecules. And this time, even more bonds form, fixing the particles in place and freezing the liquid into a solid. Now, the last thing we need to mention is that if we're working within a closed system, changes in state won't change the mass at all, as there's still the same number of particles. However, the density of the substance will change, with solids having the highest density, liquids having slightly lower density, and gases having the lowest density of all three. Summary. I will summarize what we explained in this video. First one, particles of each one. Solid like we, see, we can see at this image. Liquid this one. This is solid. This is liquid. This is gas. The strength, the strength of force of attraction between particles very strong between solids strong but less than solids at liquids and very weak at gases the arrangement of each one at solid arrangement regular and orderly most of time the motion is vibrated okay here the arrangement at liquid is random but closer than gas the add gases discretely random far apart from one another like we see here the particles is far away from each other so the attraction force is very weak because particles are away from each other packing solid very closely packed liquid closely packed but farther apart than solids gases move around freely in random and in straight lines the motion at solids vibrate about in fixed position at its position they are vibrated liquid solid roll over on another randomly gases far apart and no regular movement they, are, they have random movement. Don't forget your homework for today, page 70 at textbook 1, questions 1, 2, 3, and 4. At the end of our lesson today, thank you for listening. Have a nice day, my dear students.